The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow, though he does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The word of the Lord. I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Well, happy Father's Day. Whether that word has wonderful, neutral, or not so good connotations, I hope that we will all be one in gratitude for the life given to us through the Father, God. When it comes to telling parables, Jesus was the master. We just heard two of his parables, the parable of the seed growing secretly and the parable of the mustard seed. And just a few sentences before the text that Sarah just beautifully read to us from Mark's Gospel, Jesus told another story, the parable of the sower. Now you might remember that parable as the story in which the sower casts seed on four different types of ground, and the seed grows and yields a good harvest, 30 60 and 100 fold. But the seed grew only from one kind of ground. How do we begin to understand these seed parables? You might not know it, but every week in our staff meeting, the clergy and staff gather and they engage the scripture for the coming Sunday. And we really scratched our heads, saying, how do you make sense out of these parables? And some of us even said, well, you don't. It might be helpful to remember that parables are are generally short stories or snippets of stories that are intended to point beyond themselves, beyond the content in order to reveal something more, in order to reveal something hidden, a truth or a principle. So parables are not explicit. Their message is hidden. I think it might also be helpful to remember Jesus was telling these stories to people 2,000 years ago. People who lived in the Middle East, people who were storytellers, they were accustomed to telling and hearing stories, stories with ways that culture was transmitted. And in fact, the three great Abrahamic traditions, religions, 
Judaism, Islam, and Christianity all arose from that country, all arose in the tradition of storytelling. We are all people of the story, people of the word. The Torah, the Quran, the Holy Scriptures. Our Christian stories tell us that our ancestors, our ancient ancestors, were pretty certain that they knew who God was. King of kings, Lord of lords, God of power and might. And they knew what power and might looked like. We said it in the psalm, chariots and horses, bloody conflict and triumph. And the people who are listening to Jesus tell those three parables about seeds, they probably had a picture in their minds of what the kingdom of God would look like. It probably looked like the Romans be defeated and banished from their land. So why in the world was Jesus telling these people stories about seeds? What did he mean when he said to the disciples, to you has been given the secret of the kingdom? Can't you just see them scratching their heads and rubbing their eyes and trying to wrap their minds around his words? The kingdom of God is as if someone came and scattered seed on the ground and they would sleep and rise and the seed would grow. Or, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? It is like a mustard seed. What are the seeds? So today I decided I'd like to tell you another story. Another story that um, I've adapted, kind of rewritten for us, inspired by something I read by Harry Moody and David Carroll in their book, The Five Stages of the Soul. It goes like this. There were three men who lived in the desert southwest. They made their livings in business, government, and information technology. They liked to get together on Friday mornings early and tell their stories with one another and argue about current affairs. There might be some people here who can relate to that. And the thing is, these three men shared one dream. All three of them said that they wanted to be gardeners. But how is a guy supposed to be a gardener on the desert? Well, one Friday morning, one of the men noticed in the Arizona Republic an ad. Master gardener coming to town. All are welcome to meet him. And as it turned out, when the master gardener arrived in town, he heard that there were three men who wanted to learn how to garden. And so he decided he would go and visit each one of them. And the master gardener said to the first man, do you want me to teach you how to grow something in this deserted place? And the first man thought to himself, well, actually, now that I think about it, I kind of like my deserted place. I like the lizards and the rocks and the cactus. I don't really want to change anything. I guess I like daydreaming talking about gardening. And so the first man told the master gardener, no, I do not want you to teach me how to grow something in my deserted place. And the master gardener left. Meanwhile, the second man was home hoping that the master gardener would visit him as well. And in his mind, he was imagining their conversation Oh, how they would talk, talk about plowing the earth and planting the seed and best practices for fertilizing and weeding and watering. 
And pretty soon he had constructed this great image and picture in his mind about what his life as a gardener would look like. And just about that time, the master gardener arrived and said to him, Would you like me to teach you how to grow something in your deserted place? And he said, Yes. And the master gardener instructed him, Well then, wait here. I'll be back. The second man waited and he wondered, what's with this master gardener? Why isn't he teaching me? How will I know what I should be doing? And after two days, the master gardener arrived and he said to the second man, there is a wheel at the back of your deserted place. Turn it 360 degrees every day. And the master gardener left. The second man scratched his head. This was not what he pictured. But he went outside, and sure enough, he found a wheel at the back of his deserted place, and he turned it full 360 degrees, and nothing happened. Well, he did that for the next couple of days, and, and nothing ever happened, and he got kind of busy and distracted, and pretty soon he forgot about the wheel. And then one morning he happened to go out, and he noticed the wheel again, and he, and he turned it the next couple of days, and nothing happened, and he forgot it for several weeks. One morning he went out, and he thought, well, I'm going to give it one last try, and the first man dropped by to visit him. And just as he was about to turn the wheel, the first man said, What in the world are you doing? And the second man ground his teeth together and he grumbled, Ugh, that master gardener, he's a fraud. Meanwhile, the master gardener visited the third man and asked him, Do you want me to teach you how to grow something in your deserted place? And the man said, yes. And the master gardener told him, well then, wait here. I'll be back. Two days later, the master gardener returned and said, there is a wheel at the back of your deserted place. Turn it 360 degrees every day. And the master gardener left. Here's the thing. While the second and third man were waiting, the master gardener installed an irrigation system underground. And the two men didn't know it. They couldn't see it. Every time they turned the wheel, it irrigated the earth. So let's go back to the third man. Even though the master gardener's instructions made no sense to him, the third man did what the master commanded. Every morning he arose. He went outside and he turned the wheel 360 degrees. And then, one morning, something happened. A green sprout broke through the dry earth. And the third man became very nervous. Something is growing. Something is growing in my deserted place, and I have no way to water it. What will I do? How will I keep it alive? And all he could do was what the master gardener had commanded him. So every morning, the third man arose, went outside, and turned the wheel. And he watched the green plants growing. And after a while, he noticed the leaves getting larger. And he noticed that on the leaves was written words. And the words told him what to do next. One evening, the first two men stopped by to visit the third man. And they asked him, how is it that you are able to grow this garden? And the third man answered, It's a mystery to me. 
I do what the master commanded, but I don't understand it at all. Growth just seems to happen naturally. If you're at all like me, at this point you might be wondering, what was it that grew in the third man's deserted place? Anyone? It was the Word. It was the Word of the Lord. All three men said they wanted to be gardeners, and all three men heard the Word of the Lord. When the first man heard the Word of the Lord, he realized that his life would be radically changed if he kept listening to that Word. And the first man's desire to keep his life the same that desire caused him to turn away from the word of the Lord. And the kingdom of God did not grow in his deserted place. When the second man heard the word of the Lord, he could not wrap his mind around it. Nonetheless, he did what the Lord commanded. For a little while anyway. He gave it a half-hearted attempt until his friend showed up and asked him, what in the world are you doing? And then he dismissed the word, and the kingdom of God did not grow in his garden. When the third man heard the word of the Lord, he could not wrap his mind around it. It just didn't match up. Nonetheless, he did what the Lord commanded, and he persevered in doing what the Lord commanded. And the gospel, the word, the kingdom of God flourished. The third man's deserted place became the garden. As Jesus said when he explained the parable of the sower to his disciples, the ones who hear the word and accept it bear fruit 30, 60, 100 fold. May you too hear the word of the Lord and accept it, that the word of the Lord may bear fruit 30, 60, 100 fold in you. Amen.